Thanks for staying with us. So joining us now, women are striving to be, do so much in their careers, businesses, and uh, profit endeavors like never before. But some are struggling to make the desired impact. One missing piece could be exposure. We'll be having with us the resident pastor at King's World and King's Word, an executive vice president of King's Word and the New Churches and International Ministry with locations in Nigeria, United Kingdom, North America. Hmm. Welcome with us, Pastor Nay in the building. Woo. Welcome, Ma. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. So we know you'll be, you'll be talking about your upcoming conference in a moment because I know that's why you came. But there was a conversation we're talking and since we're having a heavy guest like you, mm -hmm. we have to ask your thoughts on it, you know. Um, we had discussed the fact that a man married a woman who already had children and they were fine with it and all parties were okay. Mm -hmm. Midway in the marriage is now complaining of the additional responsibility and asking the woman to return these two children to their biological father. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it was a good idea? Well, um, I think that the conversation you've had on this so far has been very interesting. Um, being a pastor, I've seen this in a number of different scenarios. I've seen situations where it's worked out. I've seen situations where it didn't work out so well. I want to say that it's a situation that requires a lot of discussion, <coughs> conversation before, during, mm. and when there's friction, there's a lot of conversation that needs to happen. Mm. I don't think it's right to send the children back because things have changed. Mm. Marriage goes, marriages go through a lot of seasons, and this is just another season, like, you know, any normal marriage would go through. Right. And the man may regret it later on if he just sends the children back. And um, just having the children uprooted from where they are at right now right. and trying to plant them, even though it's their biological wow. father, doesn't mean it's going to be healthy for them. Yeah, you're or right. even healthy for him in this marriage because the mother isn't automatically going to switch mm -hmm. and say, okay, it's okay, you know finances are going um, the wrong way, they are not going as planned. I understand, no, it's going to affect Absolutely. that marriage. No, we've not even discussed the children. We didn't even discuss how this affects the kids. But yeah. um, let's take a few comments on social media. I have yeah. one from Otumba okay. Harem. He says that it is nauseating, albeit disappointing, to see innocent children having to go through what they did, not bargain for. Mm -hmm. For a man to leave his children, for another man to train is irresponsible. He says, if a man has to marry a woman, who has children, the man should be ready to marry such a woman with her, resp with her responsibilities, irrespective of the financial and primordial challenges. Nobody knows tomorrow. Those children may even be the ones more supportive of him than his biological children in future. We've seen this happen sure. all the time. Okay. Any other comments for you? Yes, up? Honorable Ademola says, Alala, they said, let's be honest, all these challenges we're talking about can only be solved with money. If both parties are well endowed and have a well paid or have well paid jobs, businesses and money is available, there won't be any problem. Let us pray that we have enough resources at our disposal. But I also take it to be Bang Bade's uh, message. He says, the real issue is not money. It is about the trauma the man is subjected to by the wife in relation to the children from the previous marriage. The wife nags when the children are sent on errands, reminding the husband that the children are not right. his. Mm. That's traumatic. Okay, so that's all we can take on that. We just wanted to wrap that up. But the truth is, in, in a nutshell, just like Pastor May has said, the conversations must start before and even during the marriage. And in this kind of situation, you don't expect a woman to switch their emotional connections to this. Yeah. So. In every situation like this, it's hard. We must. Everybody has a role to play. The father, the mm -hmm. biological father, and the woman all have to have a proper conversation. Because in the in the West, we always have this organized structure of co-parenting, but it's not totally organized here. We've not really formalized it here. So it's just kind of we have to just kind of find a way. So just we have to find a way to ensure that co-parenting is properly um, institutionalized in a way that it's recognized and people can take full responsibility. So back to our guest in the building. Pastor May. Pastor May, you have um, a conference coming up. You know, it's a for women conference and it's um, about getting women in leadership. I mean, let me, let me hear your thoughts on women in leadership. Is it true that women are not really being given that opportunity in leadership? Well, um, it's not that women aren't trying, but um, statistics show and I strongly feel that they are not reaping the fruits of their labor as much. Now, I'll give a little bit of correction. The 
conference itself, it's not just about leadership, mm -hmm. but it's about exposing women to more. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the issues that women struggle with in the corporate world, in businesses, and entrepreneurship, and even running non-profit organizations may be connected to the level of exposure that we're intentionally giving ourselves. And um, that's what we want to talk about in the conference. And um, we want to look at exposure through different lenses. Mm. And I don't know, should I go right, into absolutely. that? Yeah. I mean, want to look at exposure through the lens of knowledge. Like, how do we intentionally go after knowledge? And what are the things that um, hinder us from exposing ourselves to the knowledge we need? You know, I don't know. I mean, I have had instances where I realized that I was ignorant in a particular area of life. And then just that burden of, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm this far behind. You know, sometimes would weigh on me so much that I wouldn't go after what I need to go after. Someone says that the day you wake up is morning. You know, so how do we make the day we wake up morning and start acquiring the knowledge we need? Um, we will look at exposure through the lens of learning. It's not everyone that's exposed to knowledge that learns. Mm. Sometimes we may be surrounded with so much knowledge, sure. but not learn because there are certain things that prevent us from learning. One of such things is bias. Mm. If we have a bias against the person who is trying to give us the ah. knowledge, something is going to switch off in our mind. Oh, he's too young, he's relatable. too old, he's not married. relevant, he's not married, he's not this, he isn't yesterday. that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, how do we stop our biases? from um, entering our learning. We'll look at exposure through the lens of relationships. Relationships expose us to much more. I don't need to experience everything in life, but if somebody I am in a relationship with has had a certain experience, then I can have the exposure that they have had. But you know what? As beneficial as relationships are, they are very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to get hurt. It's very easy to get uh, you know, turned away from somebody. It's very easy, even for for envy and jealousy to come in and affect our relationships. For example, if your friend gets promoted to a certain um, level at work and it's giving them more exposure, I mean, how are you going to handle it? You know, especially if it's a position you have always wanted. You know, a natural part of us wants to pull back, you know, want to say, oh, okay, you know, I'm not jealous, but, you know. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, that friend's exposure that's supposed to benefit me then becomes, you know, non-beneficial to me because I am not handling their promotion the right way. Mm. So we want to look at relationships. What are the things that affect us in relationships? Because some of us are struggling for places for positions that just the right relationship will just give us a key yeah. to, you know, yeah. I mean, exposure. Mentoring in exposure is very, very important. Mentoring relationships, right. you know, peer-to-peer -peer relationships, and so on and so forth. I just you see that um, exposure through relationships and talking about envy and jealousy and maybe taking yourself out of something that can benefit you. Could you just give us an advice? If you find yourself in a situation like that, yes, my friend has gotten this promotion and is giving her this exposure. I can't get it because I'm not there. In what way can I still maintain that? Why is it beneficial for me to maintain that relationship? And would maintain that relationship give me that exposure through her? Could you just talk to us about yes. that? Oh, it's so important to maintain that relationship because it's like your friend has climbed the ladder and is looking over a wall, and maybe you are still on the ground, and the friend is telling you what's over that wall. You see, I may not be able to see what's over the wall, but the fact that I'm getting that information where I'm mm. at will let me know that there's more to life. Mm. Or else I may never know. You know, I put something on social media a few months back that, you know what, if somebody is going to get that promotion, why not someone I know? Mm. Mm. Isn't it better for it to be someone I know who I can benefit from, who I can sit down and say, what does it feel like to go to Astro Rock? <laughs> you know, rather than someone to. I have no access to, right? Yeah. But you know the reason why we find it difficult? Mm. If somebody you don't know, for example, I asked people, I said, do you get jealous of Elon Musk? 
No. Probably no. not. No. Do you get jealous of Bill Gates? No. no. Why? Because you don't find a basis for comparison. Oh. You are not close enough to compare yourself to any of these people. But once somebody in our circle, someone we can compare ourselves with, someone we can say, oh, we went to the same school, oh, we go to the same church, oh, we live on the same street. Okay, that was that one gist. That one gist. Once it's somebody that we can <laughs> compare ourselves to, then that jealousy kicks in because it's an indictment against ourselves. Hmm. We see their promotion, we're like, why not me? And really at the bottom of that is something that's condemning you, telling you that, why not you? Right. Right? Let me take your video because it's important for us to see this. Watch this clip tomorrow. I didn't even realize it's just not tomorrow. Fantastic. Well Amazing. done. So I would have loved to dig into the um, relationship thing, but because of time, how do we begin to have women who mentor us? Um, you know, you mentioned, you just highlighted a bit of it when you were talking about the relationships. How do we build women who would mentor a lot of women? Mm -hmm. uh, there are women out there who need to be in close proximity uh, with women who have made it, who have, you know, crossed over the other side, who want to get inspiration, ask questions. You're a woman, you have the same challenges like I do, but we don't see a lot of women who sit in that space to mentor a whole lot of younger women. How do we recreate this relationship? Okay, I think um, women generally, we need to keep pushing to um, build our social capital, our um, gravitas and um, give people a perception of our charisma and let them know that because mm -hmm. charisma is a combination of competence and warmth right a charismatic person draws people to themselves not only because of what they know but because people perceive them as warm mm -hmm. right so the more we build our charisma the more you know, we're showing that we know stuff, mm. but we're also showing that we're warm enough to draw people to us. Mm. Um, there's no point being that woman in the ivory tower, everybody looks up to you, mm. but people cannot feel like they can be real around you because to actually be an effective mentor, you need to be vulnerable. Yeah right i mean it's more powerful for me to tell you that i've made mistakes mm -hmm. you know and by some way from, by some form by god's grace mm -hmm. by whatever you know my mistakes have not killed me mm -hmm. you know it's and fine. then you get drawn to me like let me let me pause you for a second because i know that you have to, you have to talk about the event so, yeah, so i wanted to ask you about this the thing. time of the event the venue of the event and how people watching can join the yes. event mm -hmm. okay so tomorrow the event starts tomorrow April 21st at 5 p.m. at Cari Center in Oregon, Lagos. And then on Saturday, we are starting at 9 a.m. And it's going to be a long one on Saturday. It's going to be so full and so rich. And then we'll finish in, on Sunday. Um, but Friday, Saturday, very, very important and very great uh, meetings um, going to be happening there. Free? And then free. It's free, mm. yeah, completely free. And on Jesus, it's got to be free. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they will take away from <clears throat> coming to the event? Um, I think their eyes will open. Um, this is a topic that's been on my heart for over a year. And I think that I've meditated on it, thought on it, and we've carefully selected speakers who will talk about these different lenses um, that we're going to examine exposure through. I think women coming will have their eyes open. Now, it's going to be a conference that will change you right there and then, but more importantly, it will empower you for change after the conference. Mm -hmm. It will show you if you need work, how to do the work. Um, because, yeah, I believe in a one-time change, a sudden change, but more powerfully, I believe in consistent Systemic. change. Yeah. That's it. Something that I read, I said exposure through the lens of empathy. You didn't mention that. What's that exactly? Oh. It was a snip. It's a shot. <laughs> Very good. Um, for those of us that feel called to serve people, you know, that feel like the calling on our lives is to make a difference in people's lives, we need to empathize with the people we are called to serve. Mm -hmm. We need to have exposure to the pain they feel. That is going to dictate the kind of passion with which we are going to execute on our assignments. Mm -hmm. But if we just dole out solutions that don't work, just, oh, just do this, just do that, without feeling the pain, mm -hmm. without knowing the work they went through. You know, we just talked about the woman and the, you know, the mixed marriage and all that. While we talked about it, we're going into some of the pains that this kind of situation I mean, come up. with, yeah. you know, but sometimes when we're called to maybe um, even preach, 
we can be very, very superficial with our very solutions. Preachy. Mm. Very preachy. Give you a few <laughs> scriptures and say, go and be well. Let it be well, <laughs> with, well you. with you. Without understanding what's happening with that single mother. Mm. Why did that girl go into prostitution? Mm. Right? Mm. Why did they fall into that lifestyle? Yeah. Understand some of the pains there. It will make us more effective. Is the there room for to have to join virtually? There yes, room there's that? room to join. Okay. Um, to join, go ahead and register bit.ly slash exposure 2023, bit.ly slash exposure 2023, all lowercase, and register. You'll get the link to join uh, tomorrow. Fantastic. Amazing. All done. Congratulations. Fantastic. I'm wishing you the best. Uh, on the conference, I we'll hope to have you back again next year. So you do it every year? Every year. Oh, this, what, what edition is this? This is, oh my. Can't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a break during <laughs> pan, the pandemic. All right, okay, okay. All right. Uh, that's all we can take on today's show.